scooters, they're not what you used to think. Here's our Uber scooter shootout of late 2013, and the smallest engine in these is 582 cc, stretching all the way up to 700 cc for the Kimco. Troy, give us some more background on these things. Well, from my left to my right, we've got the Kimco MyRoad 700i, kind of Kimco's flagship. Next to me on my left is the Suzuki Bergman 650 ABS. To my right is the Honda Silverwing, and at the far end over there is the BMW C650 GT. As Kevin mentioned, Uber scooters meant to do a little bit of everything, but especially uh, sport touring, which is something you may not think of when you look at these machines, but they are really capable. Uh, I think Tom can elaborate further on just what they can do. I was kind of curious, I mean, isn't the German scooter the Uber scooter, and then these guys are maybe mega scooters? <laughs> it might be the Uberist. <laughs> the Uberist. <laughs> All right, well, what's interesting is that, you know, just a handful of years ago, the Bergman here was kind of the only guy in this realm of, you know, Uber mega scooterness. Uh, and just recently, we've had everybody kind of jump on board. Uh, Honda with the Silverwing, uh, BMW with the C650 came out, uh, what, just yeah, last year? And then uh, here we have Kimco with their, uh, as of now, flagship biggest displacement scooter that they've ever brought stateside. And they are now swimming with the big league, you know, BMW and uh, the other two Japanese companies here. So they've got some stiff competition they're facing. So this shootout, I think, will go really well to see how they stack up against, you know, the, uh, the industry standard. Yeah, and uh, one of the differences, uh, brakes. Evans, tell us about that. Yeah, see, all of these bikes uh, might surprise you with some of the features they come with. They seem like premium things from adjustable windshields to heated seats, electronic suspension, and they all have ABS. So we got a whole bunch of different features, unlike like a 600cc sport bike shootout where the componentry is all pretty similar. We got pretty divergent things. At the uh, lower end of the scale is Honda, which doesn't have the adjustable windscreen of the, Kim of the Suzuki or the BMW. And really, its only big feature is ABS, so it's a lighter, easier to maneuver bike, but on the open road, it's, it's kind of outgunned in the engine department, so it's kind of a, a wide map these things are uh, intersecting. The level of performance has really increased a lot since the Bergman originally got introduced and then revamped last year. And speaking of the Bergman, and it has uh, the electronic adjustable CVT transmission, which kind of mimics, in a way, a, a dual clutch where you can actually push a button and change gears either up or down. So it's a really cool feature. And I think we've spent enough time talking. We should go out and ride these things and come back to you later. interesting about these is that they have big powerful engines to easily go 80 or 90 miles an hour on the freeway and yet in town they're a little bit more usable than motorcycles they've got a uh, step through or pseudo step through designs easy to uh, get aboard and uh, all of them have a large amount of underseat storage so you can put your helmet uh, jacket a uh, week's worth of groceries underneath the beer. seat beer and uh, bring it home so a little more usable than a motorcycle and uh, about as fast as you want to go on, on on public roads. And these can also be an alternative to a car. You live uh, in an urban environment, not a lot of parking and stuff. You can have one of these, take them to the store, put your groceries in, and you don't really need a car, especially if you're in Southern California. If you're in Wisconsin, you might think differently. If you're a motorcyclist, you may not think scooters like this would uh, suit you, but uh, we've found a lot of things to like about these Uber scooters. Kimco over here, new entry, and uh, I'd say I'd describe it as unrefined, but it's got a lot of good quality still. Good chassis and uh, good brakes, but a little bit unrefined. BMW, very well-rounded package, hardly anything to complain about, and it's got the best cornering clearance. Silverwing over there, that's probably the best one in town, and if you're a shorter rider, you're probably going to feel most at home on that one. And the Bergman over there, that's a really well-rounded scooter too. A lot of features. I like the transmission. It's a unique transmission to all these. And uh, it, it, it stands out as something different and, to my eyes, uh, preferable. Lack of ground clearance on the Bergman is one of the few uh, drawbacks to it. How do you see these things, uh, Evans? 
If you really are into a performance bike, um, maybe you've ridden full-size motorcycles before, the BMW will be the most familiar to you. However, you'll miss the gear shift thing that the Bergman offers. Um, if you just want a, a basic get around town type of thing that's capable of going long distance, I'd go with the Honda. And the Kimco is, it's, it's kind of hard to describe. It's got so much going for it and it's just, it's just not quite there yet. It has a little bit to go. The plus qualities the Honda has for it, uh, lightweight, so very maneuverable around town, like we just said, out on the higher speed, the freeway stuff, a little bit more, you know, skitterish, but it is lighter weight, so that helps make up for the smaller tire sizes. Even with the same wheel sizes and the Kimco being slightly heavier on wet weight, like Kevin was saying, it's got a great chassis. It was actually, I think, uh, more stable and confidence inspiring going into the corners as far as scooters go. The Suzuki, I'm not sure the, the weight balance or something somewhere threw it off and because of its wheel sizes, you know, it was a little bit more, you know, you could feel it. Whereas the BMW feels really good, goes through the corner, you know, very familiar feeling. I guess, you know, that's my two cents on it so far, Troy. Two cents, that was more like two dollars. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I'll start from the top there with the Kimco. It's really impressive for, you know, Kimco's entry into the premier quote unquote luxury scooter realm. Refinement, it could use some more, but it's got some good touches. It's on its way to being a very solid scooter. However, on the other hand, the electronic suspension, I personally really didn't feel much of a difference in any of the three settings. Then you go to the BMW, which is refinement to the max. It's such a, a well-sorted scooter that, you know, you really can't go wrong no matter what you want to do with it. I'm leaning towards either the BMW or the Suzuki. I like the seating arrangement for the two of them. Under seat storage is really good on both of them. I can't pick between the two of these right now. Um, and I think we're all kind of torn as well, so. I'm not torn, Troy. I'm sorry, I'm not torn. <laughs> because right now at the price of $11,000 and you get this neat little electronic shifting, I don't ride a scooter to shift gears. I want just a CVT transmission. So for a little lesser money, the BMW comes with heated grips and a heated seat. And our little ride last week up through uh, 28 degree weather, who wanted to be on the BMW? We all did. Everybody. <laughs> right. Yes. So I will personally choose the BMW for that reason. Continue. If, if we're on this track, do you two want to weigh in on your choices as well? Evans, I'll start with you. Okay, well, I am definitely leaning towards the BMW, but if the deciding factor is gonna be the accessory heated seat and grips, I do believe the Berkman has But then you're up as over 11,000. That's true, so point but, taken. You know, the Bergman shows that it's been in this class, that it used to be this class for a long time. Although it's heavy, it's still easy to ride around town. I think the clutch, the, the clutch system is really easy. You don't have to get acclimatized to it. It just does what you want. It's pretty easy to maneuver. But yeah, for performance guys, we've all been on the racetrack. Uh, and uh, for those kind of people like us, I think the BMW's got to be the winner.